In the heart of Pittsburgh's historic district lies a house that has stood the test of time. Its darkened windows and dilapidated facade whispering tales of the past to those who dare to listen. This is the story of the Langley Mansion, a once majestic home turned into a repository of chilling apparitions and unexplained phenomena. Its reputation as a haunted house is not just local lore, but a tapestry of true encounters that have left even skeptics questioning the veil between the living and the dead. The story begins with the Langley family, affluent and well-respected, who built the mansion in the late 1800s. It was a beacon of luxury and sophistication hosting lavish parties that were the talk of the town. However, this grandeur was not to last. The family was struck by a series of tragedies that would forever alter the course of the mansion's history. It started with the mysterious disappearance of the youngest Langley daughter, Amelia. She was last seen playing near the grand staircase, her laughter echoing through the halls. Then silence. Despite exhaustive searches, no trace of her was ever found. In the years that followed, the mansion seemed to turn against its inhabitants. Guests reported seeing the figure of a young girl in a white dress wandering the corridors, her eyes hollow, her expression one of eternal sadness. The sound of her laughter would turn into weeping in the dead of night chilling the bones of those who heard it. As the Langley lineage dwindled, the mansion fell into disrepair. The once lush gardens were overrun with weeds, and the grand ballroom, where music and laughter once filled the air, now lay silent, save for the occasional creak of the floorboards or the whisper of the wind through broken panes. The last of the Langley line, Edward, was a recluse, rarely seen by the townsfolk. It was rumored that he dabbled in the occult, seeking to contact the spirits that roamed his home. His experiments seemed to only exacerbate the hauntings, drawing more spectral entities to the mansion. Visitors spoke of cold spots, phantom touches, and a pervasive sense of being watched. Edward's own demise was as mysterious as the events that plagued his family. He was found in his study, an open book on the occult in his lap, his face frozen in an expression of horror. Today, the Langley Mansion stands as a testament to its tragic past. Paranormal investigators and thrill-seekers alike are drawn to its decaying elegance each hoping to catch a glimpse of the otherworldly residence, the most daring venture into the heart of the mansion, to the grand staircase, where it's said Amelia's spirit is most active. Some emerge with tales of encounters too real to dismiss, while others leave with only the heavy feeling of sorrow and loss. The true nature of the Langley Mansion remains shrouded in mystery. Is it a gateway to the afterlife? A prison for tormented souls? Or merely a monument to a family marked by tragedy? The answers lie within its walls, waiting in the shadows, leaving the story of the haunted house in Pittsburgh hanging. A narrative thread waiting to be picked up and woven into the fabric of the next daring explorer's experience. As the autumn leaves began to wither, casting a golden hue over the streets of Pittsburgh, the infamous haunted house on Maple Drive stood ominously, untouched by the season's beauty. The locals whispered tales of its ghastly past, each more horrifying than the last yet none dared to cross its threshold. Elena, a curious and intrepid journalist, 
had always been fascinated by the supernatural. Despite the warnings, she was determined to uncover the truth behind the house's eerie reputation. Armed with her camera and recorder, she stepped into the shadows of the forsaken abode as the sun dipped below the horizon, shrouding the city in twilight. The house, a Victorian relic, whispered secrets through its creaking floors and moaning winds. Elena felt an inexplicable chill, not from the cold, but from the sensation of unseen eyes watching her every move. As she ventured further, her recorder picked up faint, indistinct murmurs, like distant conversations held in a forgotten time. In the heart of the house, she found an antique mirror, its surface clouded with age. Drawn to it, she peered into the glass, expecting to meet her own gaze. Instead, she saw a fleeting glimpse of a woman in Victorian garb. Her expression twisted in a silent scream before vanishing into the ether. Heart pounding, Elena spun around, but the room was empty save for the lingering scent of roses that had no place in such decay. The air grew colder, the shadows darker, and the house seemed to close in around her. As she made her way to the grand staircase, a sudden rush of whispers filled the air, urgent and panicked. The temperature dropped, her breath visible in the icy air. From the corner of her eye, she caught a swift movement, a shadow darting across the wall, too quick to be human. Elena's rational mind battled her primal fear. The journalist in her wanted to stay, to investigate, but something primal urged her to flee. She reached the staircase, her hand on the banister, when a child's laughter echoed from above, chilling and devoid of joy. Torn between her desire for the truth and the instinctual need to escape, Elena stood frozen on the stairs. The laughter grew louder, joined by the sound of small feet running down the corridor above. And then, as suddenly as it began, the house fell silent. Elena knew she was not alone. The stories were more than mere tales were warnings, yet her story was far from over. The secrets of the haunted house on Maple Drive beckoned, promising more than just whispers and shadows. As the night deepened, the boundary between the living and the dead blurred. Elena was about to uncover truths that some believed were better left buried. In the dimly lit corridors of the haunted house on Maple Drive, Elena's heart raced as the eerie silence enveloped her once more. The sudden cessation of the ghostly laughter and the vanishing footsteps above left an oppressive atmosphere, thick with anticipation. She could feel the history of the house weaving around her, each thread pulsating with untold stories, desperate to be heard. With every step, the air seemed to thicken, as if the very essence of the house was attempting to communicate, to impart the sorrow and anguish that had seeped into its walls over countless years. Elena, though fearful, was captivated. Her journalistic instincts told her there was a story here far deeper, far more complex than any she had encountered before. As she ascended the creaking staircase, the light from her flashlight danced across the walls, casting long, sinister shadows that seemed to move of their own accord. At the top of the stairs, the hallway stretched out before her, a series of doors lining either side, each one closed, harboring its own secrets. Elena chose a door at random her hand trembling as she turned the knob. The door creaked open, revealing a room that time had forgotten. 
dust motes floated in the air, caught in the beam of her flashlight. The room was furnished with an air of faded elegance, a four-poster bed dominating the space, its covers moth-eaten and draped with cobwebs. It was then that Elena noticed the painting above the fireplace. It depicted a family, regal in their attire, their faces painted with solemn expressions. But it was the eyes that caught and held Elena's gaze. They seemed almost alive, filled with a profound sadness that tugged at her soul. As she stepped closer to examine the painting, the temperature in the room plummeted. Her breath became visible, and she could see her breath forming clouds in the cold air. A feeling of being watched, not by the painted eyes, but by something unseen, filled the room. The sensation was suffocating, as if the air itself was pressing in on her. Suddenly, a soft whisper caressed her ear, so faint she could barely make out the words. It sounded like a plea, a desperate whisper from the past, begging to be understood. Elena spun around, but the room was empty, the sensation of being watched intensifying, her heart pounding. Elena realized she was standing at the threshold of a mystery that transcended mere ghost stories. The whispers, the painting, the oppressive atmosphere, they all pointed towards a narrative entwined with the very fabric of the house. But before she could delve deeper, a loud crash echoed from the hallway, snapping her attention away from the painting. Something was happening, something that demanded her immediate attention. One last glance at the sorrowful eyes of the painting, she stepped back into the hallway. The story, brimming with unspoken tales and spectral presences, leaves Elena and the reader on the edge of a deeper revelation. The house's secrets hanging in the air like the dust motes in that forgotten room. What lies beyond the hallway? And what stories do the other rooms hold? The haunted house on Maple Drive remains a nexus of the past and present. Its stories yet to be fully unveiled. Elena's heart raced as she stepped out of the room. Her mind still reeling from the whisper that seemed to seep from the very walls. The crash from the hallway echoed in her ears. A stark reminder of the house's unsettling ability to blur the lines between the physical and the ethereal. With cautious steps, she moved towards the source of the noise, her flashlight casting an unsteady light ahead of her. The hallway, once silent, now 
seemed alive with hushed sounds, like the building itself was whispering secrets. The air was thick with anticipation, and each creak of the floorboards under Elena's feet sounded like a thunderclap in the oppressive silence. She felt a palpable shift in the atmosphere, as if crossing an invisible threshold into a realm where the past and present intertwined. As she approached the end of the corridor, she found a door ajar, the source of the earlier disturbance unclear. With a gentle push, the door swung open, revealing a study, its interior swallowed by shadows. The remnants of a once grand room were evident in the decaying bookshelves and the dust-covered desk that sat in front of a large, boarded-up window. Elena's flashlight beam settled on an overturned chair, the likely culprit of the crash. But what had caused it to fall? The room bore no sign of a struggle or presence, yet the air felt charged as if the energy of a bygone era lingered, restless and unresolved. As she stepped forward, her foot brushed against something on the floor. Startled, she directed her flashlight downward, revealing a scattering of old letters, their edges yellowed with age. Bending down, she picked one up, her fingers trembling as she unfolded the brittle paper. The letter was written in a delicate script. The ink faded, but still legible. It spoke of love and loss, of promises made and broken. The words seemed to resonate with the very soul of the house, a tangible link to its sorrowful past. Elena felt an overwhelming sense of empathy for the author, a connection that transcended time. Absorbed in the letter, she barely registered the soft creaking that began to fill the room, as if the house itself was responding to the uncovering of its long-buried secrets. The atmosphere thickened, the sense of being watched returning with a vengeance. It was then that Elena noticed a faint glow emanating from behind the boarded-up window, a light with no discernible source. Drawn to the mysterious luminescence, she approached the window, her mind racing with possibilities. What lay beyond the boards? And how could a light shine through with such intensity? As she reached out to touch the wood, the temperature around her dropped sharply, her breath visible in the frigid air. Elena stood before the window caught between the tangible evidence of the house's haunted past in her hand and the inexplicable phenomenon before her, the light, the letters, the whispers, all seemed to converge in a crescendo of supernatural energy, urging her to delve deeper into the mysteries of the house. But just as she was about to pry off the boards, a sudden thunderous noise from the floor below jolted her back to the present. The house, it seemed, was not ready to reveal its secrets just yet. The story hangs in the balance, with Elena poised on the cusp of a revelation that could unravel the haunting tapestry of the house on Maple Drive. The light behind the boarded window remains a beacon of the unknown, promising answers yet obscuring the full truth in shadows. What lies behind the window? And how will the house's spectral inhabitants respond to Elena's intrusion into their domain? The story remains open-ended, the darkness of the house enveloping its secrets once more. Elena's heart raced as the crash from the hallway reverberated through the old house unsettling the eerie calm that had momentarily enveloped her. The sound, sharp and unexpected, seemed to pierce the veil of silence that hung like a shroud over Maple Drive's haunted residence. With the echo of the disturbance still lingering in the air, 
she cautiously stepped out from the room with the sorrowful painting, her flashlight casting a narrow beam of light into the dense shadows of the hallway. The corridor, once familiar in its layout, now seemed to twist and contort in the dim light, as if reshaping itself with each of Elena's hesitant steps. The air was thick, charged with an energy that seemed to ebb and flow with an unnatural rhythm, like the pulsating heartbeat of the house itself. As she moved towards the source of the noise, a sudden gust of wind howled through the broken windows, sending papers flying like lost spirits in the tumult. The wind seemed almost to carry voices within it, whispers of the past that melded with the present, creating a dissonant chorus that echoed off the walls. Elena arrived at the end of the hallway where an ancient grandfather clock stood, its pendulum still frozen in time. The crash, it seemed, had come from here. A vase that had once stood atop a small table beside the clock now lay shattered on the floor, its pieces glinting in the beam of her flashlight. But it was not the broken vase that captured her attention. It was the painting that hung above the clock, obscured until now by the darkness and the chaos of the moment. The painting depicted the house itself, but there was a disquieting difference. A figure stood at one of the windows, a figure that bore an uncanny resemblance to Elena. Drawn to the painting, she reached out her fingers brushing against the canvas, half expecting to feel the vibration of life beneath its surface. But before her touch could make contact, a cold hand grasped her shoulder, firm and undeniable. Elena froze, the blood in her veins turning to ice. The logical part of her mind screamed that she was alone in the house, that the touch was impossible. Yet the pressure on her shoulder was as real as the fear that now consumed her. She turned slowly, dread coiling in her stomach, to face whatever specter had breached the barrier between worlds. But there was nothing only the oppressive darkness and the feeling of being watched by unseen eyes. The touch vanished as suddenly as it had appeared, leaving Elena question her sanity, to wonder if the fear had conjured the sensation, yet the imprint of the cold hand lingered, a chilling reminder of the house's supernatural inhabitants. With her heart pounding in her chest, Elena realized the depth of the house's mysteries was far greater than she had imagined. The shattered vase, the painting with her likeness, phantom touch-all pieces of a puzzle that she was now compelled to solve.
night was waning, and with each passing moment, the boundary between the living and the dead seemed to thin, the house growing more restless, more alive with the echoes of its haunted past. Elena knew she could not leave, not yet. The story of the house on Maple Drive, its spectral inhabitants, and its dark secrets were calling to her, urging her to delve deeper into the shadows. As she stood in the hallway, caught between the desire to flee and the need to uncover the truth, the house seemed to settle around her, as if waiting for her decision, for her next move in the dance between the living and the spectral. The story hangs in the balance. The mysteries of the haunted house on Maple Drive beckoning with silent whispers, promising revelations that lie just beyond the veil of fear and darkness. In the dense, suffocating darkness of the haunted house on Maple Drive, Elena stood paralyzed, her mind a whirlwind of fear and fascination. The enigmatic touch, absent yet palpably real, had vanished as suddenly as it had appeared, leaving her questioning the very nature of her reality within these cursed walls. With a deep, steadying breath, she turned back to the ominous painting, the one that inexplicably featured her own likeness. The image seemed to mock her with its silent gaze, challenging her to unravel the mystery it presented. Yet, as she stared, the painted figure's expression seemed to morph, its eyes pleading for help, for release from its two-dimensional prison. Compelled by an unseen force, Elena reached out once more, her fingertips barely grazing the canvas before a sharp electric jolt sent her reeling backward. The shock was not just physical. Visions flashed before her eyes, rapid and disjointed, a kaleidoscope of sorrow, anger, and fear that spanned centuries. She saw the house in its infancy, a grand abode filled with laughter and light, only for the brightness to be eclipsed by shadows of tragedy that seeped into the very foundation. Faces, countless and fleeting, passed through her vision, each marked by the house's insidious touch. As the vision subsided, leaving Elena gasping on the floor. The house seemed to pulse around her, its walls breathing with the weight of untold stories. The air grew heavier, charged with an anticipation that threaded its way into her very soul. Rising unsteadily to her feet, Elena knew she was no longer merely a visitor within these walls. She had become a part of the house's tapestry, woven into its history with threads of fate she could not comprehend. The realization emboldened her, fueling the determination to confront the house's mysteries, to give voice to the silent screams that echoed in the unseen corners. With renewed purpose, she moved towards the grand staircase that led to the attic heart of the house's enigma. Each step creaked under her weight, the sound unnervingly loud in the oppressive silence. The staircase spiraled upward, enveloping her in an ever-tightening coil that seemed to draw her deeper into the house's embrace. At the top of the stairs, the attic door loomed daunting in its silent promise of revelations yet to come. Elena's hand trembled as she reached for the knob, the metal cold and unyielding beneath her fingers. With a deep breath, she turned the knob and pushed the door open, bracing herself for the unknown. 
the attic, vast and cluttered with the detritus of generations, lay bathed in the pale moonlight that filtered through the lone, dust-covered window. And there, in the center of the room, stood an object covered with a tattered cloth, its form indistinct, yet undeniably commanding in its presence. Elena's heart raced as she approached, driven by a force beyond her understanding. Her hands reaching out to unveil the object and reveal the heart of the house's darkness. But as her fingers touched the cloth, the house trembled, a low moan echoing through its corridors, as if warning her, pleading with her to halt her quest for truth. The story hangs in the precipice of Revelation, the secrets of the haunted house on Maple Drive, a whisper away, yet shrouded in a darkness that clings to the edges of understanding, promising that the journey into the heart of the horror is far from over. As Elena's fingers brushed against the tattered cloth, the haunting moan of the house crescendoed into a deafening roar, the very foundations shaking with a fury that spoke of centuries of pent-up rage and sorrow. The attic, filled with the remnants of lives long past, seemed to close in on her, the shadows twisting and contorting into grotesque shapes that danced at the edge of her vision. With a courage born of desperation, Elena pulled the cloth away, revealing an ancient mirror, its frame ornate and twisted, as if sculpted from the very darkness that permeated the house. The glass, though clouded with age, pulsed with a malevolent light, drawing her gaze into its depths. What she saw within the mirror's surface was a realm of shadows, a twisted reflection of the house that bore the scars of its tormented history. Figures moved within the glass, their movements jerky and unnatural, as if they were puppets controlled by unseen hands. Among these specters, Elena saw the figure from the painting, the one that bore her likeness. But here, in the mirror's depths, its expression was twisted in a silent scream, its eyes filled with an eternal despair that mirrored the house's own anguish. As Elena watched, paralyzed by the horrific tableau, the figure reached out, its hand pressing against the inner surface of the glass, as if seeking escape from its prison. And then, with a suddenness that left her breathless, it shattered the barrier, its hand extending into the attic, into Elena's world. The air around her grew colder, the shadows deepening as the figures within the mirror poured forth whispers coalescing into a single, chilling voice that spoke of betrayal, of a curse that bound them to the house, a curse that now sought a new vessel. Elena realized, with a horror that gripped her heart, that the house had not merely been a prison for these lost souls. It had been a predator, feeding on their despair growing stronger with each spirit it ensnared. And now, it sought to claim her, to add her story to its own. With every ounce of will she possessed, Elena turned from the mirror, fleeing the attic and the spectral horde that surged behind her. The house seemed to come alive, its walls pulsating, its doors slamming shut of their own accord as if determined to trap her within. Down the spiraling staircase she ran, the echoes of her footsteps mingling with the cacophony of voices that pursued her. The entrance
entrance, her only escape, seemed impossibly distant. A beacon of hope that dwindled with each passing moment. As she reached the door, the force of the spirits upon her heels, Elena threw it open, stumbling into the night. The cool air of the outside world was a balm to her senses. The clear, star-filled sky, a stark contrast to the darkness she had fled. But as she turned back to the house, her breath catching in her throat, she saw the figures standing at the windows, their faces etched with sorrow and malice. And in the attic window, the figure with her likeness stared down at her, its expression one of warning, of a fate narrowly escaped, but forever entwined with the house on Maple Drive. Elena knew then that the story of the haunted house was far from over. It had merely found a new chapter, but as she walked away, the first light of dawn creeping over the horizon, she carried with her the tale of the house's true horror, a tale she would commit to paper, a warning to all who would listen. And though the house remained silent and watchful, its windows like dark, unblinking eyes, the spirits within were quiet, their whispers fading with Elena's departure. But the curse of Maple Drive lived on, waiting, ever patient, for the next soul to cross its threshold, to awaken the horrors that lay in wait within its walls. <laughs>